Jeannie Ballou, and welcome to Jeannie on the Beat, talking with the talent, Ann Arbor's newest talk variety show, where I'll bring you up close and personal with fabulous writers and performers. My guests tonight are Jerome Helton, Chris Coldren, and Dan Mazlick from Michigan Extra Picks, a Livonia-based company that specializes in supplying extras for the film industry. Jerome, the owner of Michigan Extra Picks, has 22 years of experience in the entertainment and film industry working for companies such as Disney and Universal. Chris, the extras casting coordinator, is a former Marine and martial artist who works regularly as a feature film extra, actor, and voiceover talent. Dan started as an extra and is moving into stunt work. So hi guys. How you doing? Hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Glad to have you here. Great. So how about if we start out by you telling us a little about what an extra does? Sure. Extras really, I think, set the pace and set the tone of the movie. I mean, it creates the background, it creates the realism for the actor, and just, you know, it sets the whole pace for the movie. Let it lets them know, hey, this is real. There's real people in the background. They're doing real things and real actions happening, and it just sells the whole film. Mm -hmm. so. Great. And what makes Michigan Extra Picks special or different than other extras companies? Well, I'd say that uh, it's really the way that we've created kind of a family environment for Michigan Extra Picks. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody looks out after each other. Uh, we wind mm -hmm. up referring work to each other. Yep. Uh, and we stay close contact and uh, communicate. Communication is essential in this business. And uh, so, yeah. anything you guys would like to add to that? Yeah, so Dan, he'd, uh, he's pretty well rounded on the being a family kind of with us, right? <laughs> Put him on the spot. <laughs> right. Uh, no, Michigan Extra Picks, it, uh, it offers, like Chris said, a family environment. I mean, it's real close. It's not, you're not in an internet database like everybody else. Yeah, we really uh, get to know our people. We really want to spend time with them, learn about their personalities, learn about them, um, help them create the characters they need to create to, you know, play the roles right. Um, you know, like today, we're kind of dressed up in different costumes. So just to give you a different variety of what characters we're going to play. And with that kind of neat training, unique training, we get to, a time to sit down, talk with people, uh, show them how to play that character, and, and just bring out the best of them. Well, yeah. it probably helps people to feel more comfortable, yeah. too, yes. when they're on the set if they know they've got your backup and feel prepared. Oh, absolutely. So how do you find extras? I mean, how would you find this guy? Mm. Dan actually it was a mistake. <laughs> Oops. Just, yeah. Kind of tripped and fell into it. Really. Kind of tripped and fell into it. I actually was uh, looking for this other guy, and um, he wasn't there, and Dan was. Oh, mm -hmm. it really goes back to uh, right place, right time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chris, almost the same thing. We I known Chris for a little while, and just hey, Chris, man, you know what's what's going on? And he's like, oh, I'm doing some acting things. I'm doing, really, you're doing acting? I said, you know. We're doing this stuff with you know extras for the film industry. You interested? He's like, oh, absolutely. So we said, hey, come on board. And it, really, it's word of mouth and networking, um, and just I mean, anybody can be an extra, and there's okay. roles for everybody. So you don't have to have been a professional actor or no. had a lot of acting experience to become an extra. No, no, nope, not at all. Okay. I mean, we we've pretty much with uh, Michigan Extra Picks, we've actually taken that and and. With, it's actually even better because we can take people that have never have acting before, they have no idea um, what to do. So we're starting from scratch mm -hmm. and we actually get a chance to train them and, and teach them the right way and things that we want to teach them uh, how to be and how to act without a lot of stuff. We do have people that do come on who have extra you know, training and casting and um, mm -hmm. you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. We also find they're, they're a big help because they actually help all the, the other crew members um, to just, you know, really learn how to act and they give different pointers. You know, we really support each other and we well, work as a team. Well, that's family yes, kind of thing you absolutely. were talking about where people really are helping each mm -hmm. other and supporting each other. Right. Um, so d describe for us a typical meeting of your, you know, of your company. What happens? What do you do? Well, uh, generally we start off by letting everybody know about the business of what's going on with Michigan Extra Picks. Mm -hmm some of the uh, upcoming stuff as far as like movie opportunities and that that we're looking at and then uh, after we go through like a, a general business agenda then we will get into things like uh, for new people set etiquette 
Uh, set etiquette. Set okay. etiquette. <laughs> 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 First thing you have to learn is say it clearly. I enunciate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. also, uh, we provide training. Mm -hmm. we, we provide those skills to the people so they can be able to do them properly. On mm -hmm. right. And not only just properly, to really sell those, those characters right. and, you know, and um, to sell the film. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've all seen some movies where just the background was just really horrible. And it's like, you know, if you have, uh, you know, people playing doctor roles and it's like, well, that doctors don't really do that. Or they don't look like that, you know, and people mm -hmm. somehow pick that up, you know. And so mm -hmm. we really stress on detail and really giving um, the best performance, uh, the best realism as possible even down to the wardrobe, um, the terminology, mm -hmm. how would a doctor talk, you know, how would he say medical terms, uh, military, you know, um, Chris is great at that. He teaches, you know, you know, what military terms mean and how it is so we can actually sound off and do stuff. You know, again, our whole goal is to just sell the movie and give a great performance and background. Make, uh, make it cohesive. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So how did you guys get involved with this? I've heard Dan's story, but you know, what, what got you into this? Real quick. Okay, well, actually it was uh, watching one of my teens in a musical production and I said, you know what, I've been in and out of the industry over the years and I think I'm finally ready to you know, step up and actually do the acting part mm -hmm. and uh, you know, really give it a push and make it uh, happen. Mm -hmm. So you just, and the opportunity yeah. was opened by, by Jerome, in fact, by mm -hmm. allowing me to uh, act within our interactive scare. All right, <laughs> great. great. <laughs> and, and Jerome, uh, what, how did you get into it? I, I fell on it too. Just I actually, when I was working at Universal Studios, I actually was working as a photographer at the start off. And um, I just started getting to know people, networking, and then, you know, mm -hmm. some people say, hey, man, you know, they're doing, uh, you know, the show called Sequest, if you can remember that, it's a sci-fi. <laughs> And they said, they need a bunch of extras. And it was a good friend of mine. And I, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm oh, not So come on out. And I just fell right into it. And I loved right. it. And just being on the set, having fun, having a good time. Got great, to meet great, a lot great. of great people. And just from there, it's just like, this is fun, you just know? Just diving in. Yeah, well, you just dive right in. Well, on that note, why don't we dive in? And, and can you guys give us a demo a little bit about what you do, like a typical sure. meeting? We could show you, yeah. Sure. We could show you one of our tactical things that we do. All right, great. So, great. so we're going to step into the other studio and see what these guys have got cooked up for us. All right. Well, Jeannie, now that we have our team and our tactical gear here and everything, we're going to go over some simple, basic things. First thing we got to do is teach you how to hold a gun. Okay. we we'll use this one. Sure. All right. So we'll this use is... this one. Okay. And of course, these are all fake guns. Uh, they're not real. We don't need to re have real guns, but they just need to look real on, on, on film. Mm -hmm. So first off, you want to hold it in your hand nice. Just put it in there. Okay. You want to keep your one finger off the trigger at all times. Go ahead and put your thumb around the side. Okay? Take your other hand, put your palm of your hand right in the other palm, nice and snug, and wrap it around your fingers, and put your thumb on top of the other thumb. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And of course, we can get into more details, but for today, we're just going to show you something basic. This is how easy it is. Okay. Okay? And you never want to put your finger on the trigger. And you never really want to point this at anybody because, again, even though these are fake guns, we want to keep it as safe as possible because you never know. Okay. Um, so we always treat these guns as if they are real guns. Uh -huh. All right? So that's that. So I want you to hold on to that gun for right now. Okay. And then Chris is going to show us how to hold, properly hold the other weapons that we have. Okay? Now, normally, there's all kinds of different kinds of weapons that SRT teams use and, and whatnot. What's an, and uh, sorry, what's SRT? This is a SWAT, Special Tactics Teams and things like that nature, and FBI. Okay. Um, and actually, these are the real techniques that they actually use. So we actually have people that are, are SWAT members and police departments that are, are actually extras, believe it or not. Wow, really? So they actually teach us. Cool. This is part of the, our meetings that uh -huh. we have that we train all the time on how to hold weapons properly, how to do tactics properly. So when we actually go on film, we can give the best performance and make it look as real as possible. So okay. if I want a SWAT guy out there, he's going to go, yeah, that's exactly how it's done in real life. And okay. we, we want to portray that as much as possible. Cool. But Chris is holding up, and one of the things we do is always you want to hold in tight, because it's always close quarters. So you want to hold in tight and keep your elbows in, you know. 
for a Chris, I mean, we never, you sometimes you see people like this, we call it the chicken wing. We never want to do this. Because okay. in real life, they can't get through around corners so, and whatnot. Yeah. Right, you get caught. Yeah, you'll get wall. caught on the wall and whatnot. Okay. Plus, it reduces your stability, too, because if you got it in tight, it has less area for the weapon to move. Where if you got like this, you're on, kind of unstable, you get to do a figure eight. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So Chris will bring it down and then bring it up back up to show you how, how we do it. Now, see, Chris is a Marine, so he's been trained to hold the clip this way. And th again, there's, there's all kinds of different ways to do different things. Um, Proper but, is actually by the barrel. Right, by the barrel. Um, but you know, for film purposes, for entertainment, we, we do whatever the director wants to, just to make it look good. If he says that looks great, we're happy. Right. Whether it's technically correct or not, it, it doesn't matter on film. Because again, it's movies, it's all make-believe. And you know, so we just want to sell that and make the director happy. Okay, <laughs> That's cool. the most important thing. And this guy already knows how to hold his gun. And, right? right. And Dan here is uh, just holding one of the basic poses. So if you're ever holding the gun around, resting, that's how you would hold it. You wouldn't have it up on your shoulder, swinging around, pointing like yeah. I'm doing like this. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> do that. Guys, I was telling yeah. you, I was partying. The same the thing. Yeah. And the same thing. You just we treat it like a real weapon. Okay. You know, you wouldn't do that with a real weapon. So we. We train and teach our people the same thing. Um, is that any, part of set etiquette? It's part of actual <laughs> tactical training. Okay. Uh, okay. Set etiquette is just learning about the lingo, um, action, cut, go back to one, starting over. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do that. All right. Um, so, so what's next? So what we're going to do next is call the, a lineup. And this is what they do before they reach into a, a room and clear a room or a space. You've, you've seen it on the movies where they come in and all the SWAT team bust in and they're like, hey, get on the ground, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, so we're training, again, as real as possible. So what we do is we call a lineup or a conga line they would do. So we'll actually do this right for you. We'll line up, okay? We'll have our team lined up and we'll be ready to go. And usually it's a six man team. It could be 12, it doesn't matter how long. And then when, when we're ready to go into the room, we'll get back and say, ready? Ready. ready. tap. Let me know. The last person's ready. So the whole entire line's ready. And when I say go. I see how your feet are lined up. Yeah, our feet are lined up together. So up as soon as I get that last tap, lets me know everybody's ready. So then we'll slowly start moving in. We'll come into a room. I will go right. Second person will go left. And we'll clear the corners. And look at all the corners, okay? Now, the whole room is covered. So if there's any bad guys or hostile people, we can neutralize them and take care of the situation. It's that simple. Okay. As a matter of fact, you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we put you in this conga line? So why don't we go ahead and um, okay. we'll run a practice real quick. We'll run a practice, all right. All right. So you go right behind them, Dan. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have the finger right, and just hold it down like this right now. Not like that. Not at all, because you don't want to <laughs> shoot your team member. <laughs> oh, that would be really bad. That would be bad. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready. So where do my feet? Here. You like put this? up against this. Right there. Yep. Okay. Yep. And hand on. Hand on. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Ready. And we go in. Right. We'll move in. Clear. All right. Clear. 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 Good. Clear. There you go. <laughs> You got that? Got it. All right, let's see if you really got it. You know okay. what? Let's do this really fast and to do it the right way. Let's go right behind here. Here's our wall. All right. We're all, we'll go behind here and line up, now that everybody's seen how we do it, and we'll come out and ready to go. So I'll stand right here for camera. OK, ready? All right. Ready. And the director will call action. Get on the ground! 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 Clear! 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 <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great, Chief. Okay, you did a fantastic you. job. Did we get him? We got him. <laughs> All right, good job. Okay. And that's what we train. Okay, good. And we train over and over to make it perfect and get as close as possible to, to the real thing. Great. And there it is. Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Super. So, what's next? Well, you know what? I think we have a few more minutes left. and. You know what? Let's do something crazy. Okay. Not only do we play tactical people and you know SWAT or you know fire EMS, um, but we also play other roles like zombies, mm -hmm. doctors, patients, mm -hmm. and Chris happens to be one of our best zombie guys. So I think. <laughs>
We should have Why Chris. Should be a zombie, huh? Yeah, we should have Chris be okay. the zombie and show us a little bit about zombies. Right. So we'll take a. Well, we could have this. And we'll get him all set. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even though we're not dressed up as zombies, but. And he's got to like yeah. slide it out. <laughs> You're all tied up there, bud. I'm already in a sling. <laughs> okay. And I'll have Chris tell you all about zombies well, here. <laughs> I'm just curious, what, what do you think a zombie does as far as like um, movement? Oh, like if I were going to be yeah, a zombie? Yeah, what, what would you do? Oh, probably like. Okay, uh, that's Frankenstein. <laughs> okay. So, well, we see a lot of that. Yeah. But what we like to do is we like to actually think, okay, rigor mortis is sent in. So your body parts don't exactly work all that well. So depending on the type of zombie, you have to think about where everything connects. Like maybe this particular one has lost some of his ability to stand upright. And even having, having a little bit of problems with his eyes and ability to move naturally. So he's not going to be able to just walk forward kind of like what you did there, but he's going to be a little bit unbalanced and he may even have to stumble to do his next step. So you take some of that into consideration, you can kind of create your own zombie. I was, wish I had two more. <laughs> I guess we gotta do yeah, that. Uh... All right. Okay, so, so we'll... your right leg doesn't work that well, so you're All gonna right. be stumbling. He's and a, he's a cop zombie. You're a cop zombie. <laughs> We've seen that movie. Uh, you, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna be the, the, the forward leaning zombie. Okay. All right. Cool. And you can figure out what you want to do with your neck because neck's important too sometimes. Okay. Um, so we're heading, we're heading toward our audience. Yes. Here, right? Yes. And you're not, you're not like, I mean, you may, okay. may be actually okay. reaching out, but your arm's not going to be steady. Uh huh. Uh, so right now we're just going to practice like a simple little, little walk, like a zombie walk. All right. Like, what should I be, like? Yeah, that's fine, this? that's fine. Okay. Yeah, just, just like that. You can, you can be the, the, the more straight up and down zombie. Okay. Mine's, mine's gonna be totally broken off to the side, but we're gonna take a, a, a step, and, and you may not even be able to take a, a, not being a like slide. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a character. <laughs> trying to get a Sliding your leg forward. Up, right? Yeah, that's no the hardest. It, that is smiling really the hardest, hardest part. <laughs> and so, let's take a. Chris has got it pretty good. Oh, he's about oh, we're running out of room too. It's too much. <laughs> it's like we need to have a little bit more of a run. But you, you get the you get the idea as far as like the movement. Usually it's un, yeah. it's uneven, really uneven. So should we go for an all out? Let's go like, for it. All out feed here. All right, okay. ready? Ready? So I'm ready. Okay. I'm and then do you make any noise when you're doing mm -hmm. this? Oh, <laughs> 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 this is ridiculous. <laughs> that's, I think that's great. Yeah. I think we had the costume and makeup. It'd be really scary. But that's basically being a zombie. <laughs> okay. Yes, depends on what kind of zombie you are, too. Plus, you got rage humans and other variations. What, what is that? Rage humans? Rage humans. Yeah, those are the more intense ones. They have a tendency to be more agile and, you know, like, they come after you. Oh. Ooh. So what do you think? You ready for this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think I want to be a extra. cop uh, zombie so that, you know, you can combine <laughs> both of these things. Absolutely. But it would be hard to carry the gun, though, right? Right. Yeah. That's hard. Could be, could be rough. Cool. All right, great. That, that was really fun, you guys. Thanks. So, right. we'll meet you back in the other studio. Absolutely. Okay? We'll see you there. All right. All right. All right, bye. Okay, thanks, guys. That was really fun. That was. I appreciated that. Um, so... I want to hear a little bit more about what's happening in the film industry in Michigan. Sure. Uh, well, the film industry is growing fast. Um, and, you know, with the incentives and things that are going on right now, and uh, with all the movies coming in, it's just, it's, it's overwhelming, Michigan. But Michigan people and the Michigan town has really done a great job stepping up, jumping in with both feet and, and catching up to speed. And um, it, it's just phenomenal. We're looking at uh, next year, 2011, like mm -hmm. over 100 films they're going to be shooting. Really? Yep, no that are scheduled and slated to be shooting here in Michigan. Wow. So we're looking for a good spring and summer to keep really busy. 
That's yeah. wonderful. Yep. Oh, well, now, how does that compare to, like, say, to last year? Last year was, um, we had about a little over 80. And the year before then, I think there was, like, 50 or 60. You can check out um, the statistics on really the exact mm -hmm. numbers. But that's what we're looking at. And so every year it has grown a lot. And it's just mm -hmm. getting bigger and, and better. That's and, exciting. And a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting for a okay. lot of fun, especially for us people that work in this industry. So what kind of films can we expect to see coming to Michigan? Like types of films? What do well, you think, out of those hundred, what, what do you think they'll be? Well, there's going to be genres, I mean, it, 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 it's increasing. It, they used to only film a very limited number. Um, and now with all the additional movies, people are even starting to almost trying to like create their own genre mm -hmm. or, or spin-offs of stuff that they've already seen. So you're going to see everything. Yeah, you're going to see everything from like uh, love stories to horror, and, mm -hmm. um, action, action, more sci -fi. zombie movies. We're going to have more zombie. Uh, there, yeah. there are some zombie, zombie movies fantasy. we heard. We can't really tell you. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, sci-fi. Okay. Actually, um, Real Steel is a sci-fi that's going to be coming. Actually, we just wrapped up on that, but uh -huh. next year it's going to be some. There are some other sci-fi's coming. All right. So yeah. So I'm going to toss a question out to you guys. What are some of the, the most the the fun, most fun films you've ever worked on? No, oh, Jen. Jen. <laughs> Jen. What? Jen. It's uh, Jen. Yeah, it's uh, a force where. Uh, Oh, well, how much can we say? <laughs> I don't know without giving the movie yeah. away. We can. Oh, it hasn't come out yet. It hasn't come out oh, yet. Oh, okay, that's so why I hadn't heard about it. Right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, we got to play mental patients of a sort. Yeah, oh. which was really fun. Yeah. It was a little different spin. Yeah. Okay. And we had a good time doing that. And I think another one so that was really good was, um, had a good time on, was Harold and Kumar. Harold and Kumar. Oh, you guys were on that. Fun. Okay. Yeah. That was fun. Beautiful. <laughs> So yeah. real quick, what Jin is what it, the film? Yeah. And and what yeah. is it? Sci-fi, fantasy, action? Sci-fi action. Sci-fi action. Yeah. Sci-fi action. Yes. Ray Park. Cool. With Ray Parks in it. All uh, right. Some Star Wars, Darth Maul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which Chris really enjoyed having fun with him because he's yeah. a big Ray Parks uh, fan. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Very fun. So how how do you anticipate that our new governor Snyder uh, th that you know, this, this shift in our government is going to impact the future of the film industry here in Michigan. Uh, well, honestly, I think it's really up to everybody in Michigan. Yeah. You know, the place at really? the table for us, so to speak. Um, it's, uh, I mean, you know, like the government's really given us everything that we could, you know, ask for. I mean, you know, they're bringing the films in. They're still an incentive. So it's up to the people in Michigan to, you know, lay that groundwork and actually take care of it and, you know, take the action and actually do it. Yeah. You know, they're kind of waiting to see what we're going to do with it, really. Right. Right. It's up to us. Yeah, we think that they're going to do it. But I, there's, you know, with everybody that's working in this industry, we're really pulling together to make it happen. And, um, you know, we're writing letters. We're, we're taking action and claiming it as our own. You know, we want this industry to grow. And, and regardless of what a lot of people have said, this industry has created a lot of jobs. It keeps a lot of people working. Maybe not full time right now because we're still building that infrastructure, but we're working, and it's and it's a great thing for a lot of people. And you know, not to mention that um, with the way the economy is and everything, I mean, people have a little time, and it's and it works out great mm -hmm. that they can get on whether they play an extra, whether they do a, a you know lighting or their camera or their PA or a grip, you know, um, even catering. You know, the simple things, um, which if you've been on a set before, the best part of it's food. <laughs> we have a good time eating some really? good food. Yeah. So a I'm lot of catering uh, businesses that, you know, restaurants have a, you know, do good. When, when, when the film comes into town in, in their area, they like that because most of the time the whole entire crew and staff will go eat at a certain restaurant. And if they love it, they're there all the time. Well, that right. just talks about sub that um, the industry... Being here in Michigan supports other businesses. Oh, absolutely. Surrounding it, just absolutely. like the auto industry, or whatever. Yep. There's all the, um, you know, the side businesses. So, for viewers who don't know about this, um, can you talk a little about the tax incentive here in Michigan and why so many films are coming to Michigan? Right now, Michigan has one of the best tax incentives, um, and we still have that for another two years. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and what is that amount? <coughs> it is forty-two. 
Um, 42 percent. It's, it's actually 40, and some places give uh, the extra cities or townships or whatever will give an extra 2 percent, so it brings up to 42. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the only place that is given something that's close to what we're given is uh, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And so there are films going to Louisiana, which is kind of sad because then it's taking away work from Michigan. Right. And, and our goal, every one of us here, is to keep everybody in Michigan working. That's why we strongly push and, and, and strive to build this company, um, help other people in the industry to get, get a foothold in here in Michigan to build this industry. Because um, we don't want that going to you know, another state. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I feel bad for them, but right now there's a lot of people in Michigan that need to work and, and this is a great opportunity for us to do that. And, and, and it's our time to do that. Right, and, and also I would think that you want to have uh, established things that are going to attract producers to come here absolutely. besides just the incentive. Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because if the incentive goes away after two years, right. you know, we will still have that infrastructure built. Mm -hmm. And that would just, you know, some producers, some of the bigger films don't even care about the incentive, you know, because they're, they got a good deal going on. And, and mm -hmm. you know, they want to spend a million dollars making a movie, let them, mm -hmm. you know. And there's a lot of people that would be happy to take a part of that, <laughs> you know. <All> right. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, and are there a lot of other extra companies in Michigan that do what you guys are doing? Are you the only ones, or? Well, Chris, well, you can answer that one. Uh, the vast majority of casting companies, what they'll do is they'll take, you know, like a headshot, your your uh, information, mm -hmm. and they will put you in a database, and so that it gives the casting director the ability to pull from that and. It's a little bit uh, maybe a hit and miss, and uh, they don't offer the same things like we do with the training and everything else. It goes with it to actually make you that desirable person to be on set. And also, they don't even really get to know you if you're just a right. name in a database. Right. right. And, and sometimes oh. they don't. They don't want to, you know, and, and they just want people. You know, if they need a casting call for 100 zombies, you know, they're just going to pick a bunch of people. And that's great. I mean, that's what extras do. Um, mm -hmm. But if they need a certain specialty extras, which that's what we do, um, we're, we're trained, we have set etiquette, we understand the industry, we know how things work on set, um, we know how to behave on set, we know how to work hard and, and stay late. Um, these are the things that we um, teach our extras mm -hmm. what to do. Showing um, up, being on time. Showing, uh, right, it's just right. Mm -hmm. being a part of the crew, being mm -hmm. just like part of the production, you know, even though we're our extras, but we like to hold our you know, hold us to a professional level, at that, you know. So uh, um, that kind of separates us from other casting companies. All right. So if uh, somebody wanted to become an extra with your company, how do they go about doing it? Yeah. Well, the simplest way is to just email us at uh, michiganextrapicks.com. Uh, was it at gmail.com? Gmail. Okay. Yeah. So that was Michigan Extra P I X, P -I -X. P -I -X. at gmail.com. Gmail yes. okay. All right. Well, yep. great. You know, you guys, this has been really fun to have it you was. here. Thank you. I Make so appreciate you taking the time to, to come out. It's been great. Hey, our pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you, Ann Arbor, for joining us. Remember to tune in the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 10.30 p.m. or look for rebroadcasts of Jeannie on the Beat at various times throughout the week. Ciao, Ann Arbor.